Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of Awan Answers, where I, Jasmine, answer your startup and business related questions. For those who don't know the structure of this show, I only accept questions which are asked to me via Snapchat. So again, my code is linked up here. So pause the video, screenshot it, add me on Snapchat, ask your question there. I'll, sc- I'll screenshot your post, whatever you send me, and I'll make sure it's included in the next show. Okay, so ask any business and startup related questions. There is no silly question, however basic it is, I will try my best to answer it as best as I can. So yeah guys, that's the layout of the show. A lot of the people who are asking questions are very young and it's their first time setting up into business or doing anything business related outside of academics. So if some of these questions are very basic for you, bear with me, feel free to ask more complex, more advanced questions, but I'll try to cover an array so we have a spectrum, all right? So yeah, let's get into it guys. Right, question one. Nice, nice snap. Little war us working away. We're all a work in progress, guys. <laughs> what importance does management accounts play in business? Oh, strong question. For those that don't know, I have a mathematics background, so I love my numbers. And numbers are super important in business. And I'm not just saying that. Um, <clears throat> my mentor told me, and this is the analogy he used, is management accounts are the scorecard of running your business. If you don't understand management accounts, cash flow, statement of accounts, balance sheets, you don't know how to, you don't know the scorecard of the game you're playing. And therefore, how do you know if you're winning or not? It's like being a, crit- being a cricketer and not knowing what a wicket is, or not knowing what an over is or a run. You need to know these basic fundamentals of running a business. You need to know what turnover is, you need to know what gross margins are, you need to know what EBIT means. If you don't know what it means, look up these terms. I'm not telling you to be an accountant, okay? Because you can hire one within your business, okay? But you need to know these basics. These are the things which will allow us to measure if we're running a successful business, okay? How do you know otherwise? So managing accounts are stupidly important. I can't stress that enough. Go study accounts, the basics of them. I'm not saying go get a degree or any qualification. You don't need your ACCA, but just know it enough to walk to do your day-by-day work and understand your business and how it runs. You need to know if you're profitable. You need to know if you've got good cash flow. You need to know whether your turnover is growing year on year or whether profitability is growing. You need to know if your turnover is growing but your margins are falling, therefore you're not as profitable. You need to know all these things. So yeah, super good question. Thank you, Nabila, for that question. Um, Let's move on to the next one. Oh, by the way, guys, no messing around here. We go straight into these questions, yeah? Hi Jaz, do you think that a startup has to do something very different than the competitors to stand out? Or would you do the same as the competition but do more advertising than them to stand out? Right joke, Edward, Quok. <laughs> if your competitors are established and you're going into a market new as a startup, you have very little chance of outdoing them advertising wise unless you're backed by big guys. Um, if you're a startup and you're just bootstrapping your business, which means you're just funding it yourself and only spending what you've earned so far, you know, there's little chance of you then going out and outdoing them for advertising and marketing dollars. It's just not going to happen. If, however, you've got massive VC funding or someone's backing you and saying, you know what, go and get them, let's outmarket them, let's advertise more of them, that's a route you can then explore them. But that's not how I like to do business. How I like to do business is to make sure if I'm launching a new business or a startup, has something fundamentally different to offer to the marketplace. For example, if I was coming into the uh, clothing game, I'm not going to try and launch and outdo Hugo Boss or Armani for marketing dollars. Is that going to work? No chance. I probably couldn't even afford one of their models if I'm a startup. It just wouldn't work like that, so what's the point? Instead, what I would do is focus on what makes my brand, my clothing line different. What makes it different? What are the values? What's the story behind my product? Can I build a story which makes people want it and aspire to wear that product? And that's exactly what you've got to do for your startup. You need to find out or identify what is your unique selling point or USP and make sure you push that ahead of everything else. And if fundamentally you don't have a USP or you don't have something which differentiates your product from what's out there, then playing the advertising game is going to get you in a lot of trouble because you need a lot of money to just make sure you stand out in everybody's faces. 
Okay, but if your product is different and you, you're good at storytelling and helping people understand the vision of that business and why they need to be part of it and how they can relate to it, then you have a chance. All right. So product differentiation, not just spending on advertising dollar. Right, guys. Next question from James. How do I scale up my business with limited resources at my disposal? This is what it comes down to, guys. And one of the one of the key attributes you can have as a startup entrepreneur is being resourceful. What I mean by resourceful? Resourceful. Resor a resourceful person just finds a way to get stuff done. They don't expect ex accept limitations and say, "Oh no, I don't have a graphic designer in my team, therefore I can't get that done." Oh no, I don't have experience in this, therefore I can't get it done. They find a way, okay? And as a startup with limited resources, limited budget, limited staff members, limited time in the day, you've got to be resourceful. So that's my fundamental tip. And there's loads of practical tips around doing that. I'm going to leave you with one hint, which has helped me out super, uh, and continues to do so as I scale up businesses, is freelance. And I mentioned this in a previous video, actually, but use freelancers until you can afford to bring people in house. And to be honest, freelancing is so, easily accessible and so and of so much better quality today that maybe you don't even need to bring them in-house, you can just continue to operate with freelancers. And what do I mean by freelancer? You can go on various websites, just Google it and type in freelancers and you'll be able to find loads of graphic designers, loads of software developers, loads of videographers and so you don't need to have all these people in your team. Just use them as and when you need them, pay them for the work they do and then move on. That gives you that flexibility as a startup. The last thing you want to do just because you need a graphic designer today is hire a graphic designer for the year on a yearly salary, stretch yourself, and then find out he's just sitting there for five days of the week doing nothing. That's not smart. Instead, go to a freelance website, find a good graphic designer, look at their portfolio, make sure you're happy with what they're doing, okay? Ask them what you want to get done, ask them how much they're gonna charge for that, and then just get it done. Pay them for the work they've done and move on. If you then need more work doing, just drop them an email, drop them a call and say, guys, can you get this done for me as well? So use freelancers, it's, it's a super effective tip and it helps you only scale up um, with the money you have. You have limited resources at that point, so um, it's important you make each pound go as far as possible. Just another point to add to that, how to scale up a business with limited resources. So for the skills you don't have, freelance them, okay? Find a freelancer that can do it, get the work done, pay them, move on. But the other thing which is super important to do when you've got limited resources, is to focus on your key strengths. Like I said, you've got a limited amount of money and a limited number of hours in the day. So the, your one strength is a thing you're good at. Let's say you have a particularly good knack for writing. Focus on writing. Focus on doing all the copy and using your strength to push the business forward as quickly as possible. Okay? As soon as it comes to a bit of the business where you don't need the writing skills, head to the freelancer. But double down on what you're good at and use that to move the business forward as quickly as possible. Because you can put in 18 hours each day. Because you want it badly. So go put in 18 hours of what you're good at. Not spend, don't spend 18 hours trying to learn Photoshop. That's an ineffective use of your time. And it's a waste. You're good at the writing. So spend that 18 hours doing what you're good at. Instead, pay somebody, how, whatever you're going to pay them, to the graphic design and then move your business forward. Right, guys, next question coming from South Africa. In South Africa, entrepreneurship isn't celebrated or encouraged due to conservative risk. Outlook. What is your advice to potential entrepreneurs plagued by the same idea? It's a deep question, guys. It's a deep question. So, why I'd say to that is screw it. If you want to run a business and you've got a vision, to make real change and grow a substantial business that can affect so many different people's lives, you go ahead and do it. But make sure your intention is clear, make sure you're focused, you're committed to do it. Uh, just clear your mind of any uh, get-rich-quick schemes or that it's going to be rosy and super easy and there's not going to be any challenges, there's going to be a ton of other challenges. But make sure you go out there and just don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Okay? Because there's tons of naysayers, just instead focus on proving them wrong. And practically, look guys, if you're in a territory or region or country where 
the government or legislation is making it difficult for you to operate, that's where you need to come back to being resourceful, like I mentioned to you. Okay? You need to find a way around it. If you want it bad enough and you really are an entrepreneur at heart, you just find a way to make it work. You just find out what pieces have you got to work with and you start making your moves. And that will never stop. It's just a constant game that you need to play. Be sharp, be focused, make smart moves, be efficient, and finally, be motivated and committed. And the only way you're going to stay motivated and committed is if your intentions are right. All right, guys? So yeah, guys, quick fire four questions there. That brings us to the end of episode three of the one answers. If you enjoy this series, please don't forget to drop me a like, a comment, and a subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions over at Snapchat. Again, my snap code is up here. Pause the video, screenshot this, upload it onto Snapchat, add me as a friend, and ask away your questions there. Again, I'm trying to get these episodes out far more frequently, so hopefully you see them more often on your uh, YouTube feed. But you have to subscribe and turn on notifications. So I'll see you in the next one. Let's get it!